So hopefully Moodle has guided you through this. We see a change in the acceleration vector, and the only way to explain a change in the acceleration vector is that the forces have changed. So we need to identify the change in the forces that caused this. Answers C and D have nothing to do with the forces changing, so they will not do as explanations of why the acceleration changed from zero to a significant vector to the right. And you only changed your push by a tiny amount. That can't have made the difference to cause a large change in the acceleration. And so the only possible explanation is that the friction force decreased in size. In other words, the kinetic friction must be smaller than the static friction that it replaced when the cabinet started to slide. The fact that when the filing cabinet starts to slide, the friction force decreases is an important observation that we're going to have to explain. So I just want you to keep that in mind, that the static friction just before the sliding was larger than the kinetic friction after sliding started. That doesn't mean the static friction is always larger than the kinetic friction. Remember, the static friction changes to match the force that you exert on the filing cabinet, and so it can be as small as we want it to be. But if you start off pushing, and you push harder and harder and harder still, eventually there will be some force where if you push just a tiny bit more, that static friction gets replaced with a smaller kinetic friction, and so the cabinet accelerates. Another important observation about friction is to look at how it depends on the perpendicular force. So, let's talk about ways that we could increase the perpendicular force acting on this cabinet. We need to push down on the cabinet. Now, I suppose we could stack a bunch of books on it, but I want it to be clear that we have not increased the inertia of the filing cabinet. So another way of exerting a downward force might be with some magnets, to have the magnets push down on the filing cabinet. So because of that additional downward force, the perpendicular force up on the cabinet by the floor increases. Let's say we were pushing at the what we knew was the maximum we could push without the cabinet sliding. Now we ad add this additional downward force so that the perpendicular force increases, and we find that we can push even harder without the cabinet sliding. In fact, if we do some careful experiments, we find that the maximum static friction is proportional to the perpendicular force. Anything we do to increase the perpendicular force on the filing cabinet will increase the maximum static friction that can act on it. A very similar thing happens with kinetic friction. If we have the cabinet sliding and we introduce an additional downward force on it, say with the magnets, so that the perpendicular force up increases, we'll always find that the kinetic friction force increases as well. The kinetic friction turns out to also be proportional to the perpendicular force. The way we write that the maximum static friction is proportional to the perpendicular force often causes some confusion. Let me rephrase that statement. The maximum strength of the static friction is some multiple of the strength of the perpendicular force. We write it this way. So that is saying that the maximum static friction is the perpendicular force times a factor mu s, which we call the coefficient of static friction. That coefficient is not a force. Notice, if you do a unit analysis on this equation, you'll see that that coefficient of static friction has to be unitless. It's this multiple we're talking about that tells us by what factor the static friction maximum value is greater than or less than the perpendicular force. 
Note, this is not saying that we can calculate the static friction force by multiplying the perpendicular force by mu s. That's wrong. It's telling us the maximum static friction is related to the perpendicular force this way. As we've already seen, the size of the static friction force can be variable. If you push harder, the static friction increases to compensate. What this equation is saying is that there is some maximum value where if you're at that maximum value and you push just a little bit harder, then the object starts to slide and the static friction is replaced with kinetic friction. The other thing this equation is not saying is that the static friction vector maximum is related to the vector perpendicular force because of course these are forces in different directions. They're not proportional in that sense, only their magnitudes are proportional. A surprising property of static friction coefficients is that they tend to be independent of the surface area. So if we take the object and sit it on a different face with a different area, we'll find that the maximum static friction is the same. And the other thing is that it's a property of the surfaces. So static friction coefficient for, say, wood on wood is different from the static friction coefficient for steel on wood or steel on steel or rubber on steel. On the other hand, once things start sliding, things are simpler. Kinetic friction is a much simpler force than static friction in many respects. It is actually given by mu k times the perpendicular force. So, and like the static friction, this is independent of contact area. There's that same proportionality to the perpendicular force. And the coefficient of kinetic friction is again a property of the surfaces. And note, we already know that when sliding starts, the kinetic friction that replaces the maximum static friction is smaller than the maximum static friction was. And that in general tells you that the kinetic friction coefficient is smaller than the static friction coefficient between the same surfaces. So here's a question for you to think about. So here we have a block, it's sitting on a horizontal surface, we know the coefficient of static friction, and we know the inertia of the block, and a hand is pushing on the block with a force of 10 newtons, and we just want to know how big the static friction force is on this block.